Good evening, my name is Vanessa. Welcome to church. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. If you're a visitor, we are super, super excited that you have decided to join us this evening. And I hope that you'll be so blessed by this evening's message on how God is our strength and how God is our peace. But for now, we'll be going into a time of worship. So won't you join us? Won't you get up on your feet so we can praise the King of Kings together? God you have made and by your love you show the way in your image you created us we come together now to sing with one voice to Christ our King and in and so all can see love
Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to New Life to You, New Life in Christ's online ministry. My name is Matt, and I've got the pleasure of just welcoming you and telling you what's going to happen in a little bit. So tonight, we're continuing on in our study on the names of God. And in a few moments, Jethro is going to lead us in the beautiful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. And he's going to share with us how we can have the completeness of peace found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that peace is something that I need to just reign and just pour over me all throughout the day, all throughout the week. And what a better time to come together as a church than on a Sunday night ahead of a busy week, whatever might lie ahead of you, where we can fix our gaze and fix our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ again and get that strength and that grace that we need to face whatever the world can throw at us in this week ahead. You know, there's a psalm I want to read to you before we um, go into worship again. But this is David when he was facing adversity, when he was facing like all these wicked people all around him. And you know, he could be pretty despondent the same way that we can. But all of a sudden, in the middle of the psalm, he changed his gaze from the problems ahead of him. And he set it on his great God and his Savior. And we see in Psalm 28 and verse 7 to the end, or verse 6 to the end even, it says, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength. And he is a refuge, or saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Now, isn't this an amazing God that we have? This God who beckons us towards him, the one who wants to lift us up, bear us up forever, but even more, that when we are weak and without strength, when we are fearful, when we are worried or anxious, that he tells us that he himself is the Lord, our strength and our shield. We see that as we look to him in dependence, when we lay everything at his feet, that we are helped, that he shines his strength through our weakness and glorifies himself as we can trust in him. And I love what David says there. He says, therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. And church, we're about to go into another worship song. And during this song, I really want to encourage you, stand up, lift up your hands to the Lord, come before your God and set your eyes upon Him. Let your heart rejoice in His presence and let Him come and take away every fear, every burden, everything that's drawing you down and let Him Himself, Jesus Christ, Be your strength, be your portion, be your refuge, be your shield, and be your Savior forever. Church, I want to pray for us, and then we're going to worship together as the Lord fills us afresh with His Holy Spirit, with grace, and with His strength. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much, Lord God, that we don't have to do any of this on our own. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the one who helps us along every way. And in fact, Lord, that you delight, Lord, when we are dependent upon you and not trying to do it in our own strength. Jesus, in our weakness tonight, Lord, in our fears and our failings, let your perfect strength be made perfect in us. And let us know that as we worship, we're worshiping in your power and in your grace and in your love and in everything that you supply. God, I want to lift up that person who's feeling the weight of the world bearing down upon their shoulders right now, Lord God, that you would be the one that would lift up their countenance, Lord Jesus, that you would be that shield around them, Lord, that you would restore to them that joy of salvation, Lord, or even that one who doesn't yet know you, that you would reveal yourself and reveal the magnitude of your salvation, and your deliverance, Lord. God, come and be in this place tonight. Fill us, Lord, afresh with your Holy Spirit, and let our praises break forth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Church, let's worship our great Lord and our great King together.
Because of who God is and who we are in the Lord. Welcome, my name is Jethro. Welcome to New Life in Christ. You know, today's been such a really beautiful, special day um, because early on today we were receiving a whole bunch of new members into the church, and it was such a, a glorious and beautiful celebration that we can do this together. Even during this time of lockdown, we get to um, invite and welcome in new members in the church and i'm so looking forward to seeing what the lord is going to be doing in their lives individually in um, the time that's coming ahead the weeks months and years lord willing ahead so you know today we, we're going to be going through a beautiful uh, covenant name of god together um, jehovah shalom god our peace but if you've been with us over the last few weeks, we've been going through the series on the covenant names of God. And I want to know if these covenant names of God have touched you, blessed you. If, if the Lord has blessed your life by getting to know him through his covenant names, please send us a message. Um, you can go to our website, newlifetou.com and get in touch with us. We'd, we'd love to know any testimonies, anything that you've experienced, how these names have blessed you. So... Men and women, you know, today we're living in um, really stressful times, I must say that. And I, was, I didn't really understand how bad the stress is that we're living in until I did a little bit of research and I found some like really shocking statistics. But I can say this, I'm part of the youth ministry in our church and just hearing the stories of how the youth are, are stressing out because of exams and schoolwork, things like that, even to the point of Sunday school kids. You know, when you hear a Sunday school kid tell you that they're stressed out and that you could please pray for their, you know, their schoolwork, you know that there's something going on. 
And it's not just here in South Africa. We see this, we find this around the world. Uh, so I found this study, according to the American Institute of Stress, this is quite recent, this is from this year in April, about 33% of people report feeling extreme stress. 77% of people in America experience stress that affects their physical health. 73% of people have stress that impacts their mental health. 48% of people have trouble sleeping because of stress. And unfortunately, this isn't just in South Africa and America, but this is also throughout the world. We see here 91% of Australians are feeling stressed about one or more important parts of their life. It says also 450,000 workers um, in Britain believe that stress was actually making them physically sick. 86% of Chinese workers are reporting stress. Church, you know, the world has tried to produce answers to stress. There's all these stress coping mechanisms and things like, you know, drugs that you can take to help you um, with stress, Valium, things like that. And, you know, um, even turning to alcohol or relationships or partying or uh, you know, drugs, things like that, to, or escapism, watching series, to just get rid of the stress of life because it's so intense. Because of the, of the advent of technology and the increase in, in, in technology, we've seen that life is just becoming so fast-paced. And, you know, every, all of us, we want to unplug every now and then and just kind of escape. But you and I, we both know that that doesn't actually solve anything, that doesn't solve our problems. But the Lord has provided an answer because this, the Bible, is a book full of answers to life's problems. We also get to know God. So today we're going to be looking at Judges 6 together. So let's pray before we start. And then you can open to Judges 6. Father, I want to just praise your name and thank you, Lord, that you are here with us, God. And that we can know because you are here, Lord, that you're going to bless us, Father. And uh, minister to us during this time, Father. And that we... We could just experience your peace and not just learn about it or know about it, God, or learn methods, Lord, but truly experience and encounter you here, Father. I just ask that you would do that, God. Pour out your Holy Spirit today and bless this word and minister to me and minister to every single person watching this. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. All right, so Judges 6, we pick up with the Israelites. They, are, they have been taken out of uh, Egypt. They've gone through the wilderness and into the promised land. And now what's happened is they, they've started turning away from the Lord and turning back to the Lord and turning away from the Lord and turning back to the Lord. And when they turn away, what they do is they go and worship other gods, the gods of the people that are around them, the Amorites, the Amalekites, the Midianites, the Canaanites, all these foreign gods. And when they do that, the Lord has been, through our judges, he's been giving them over to their enemies. And then what happens is they cry out to God and they experience relief again. And then once again, they backslide and they turn away to the gods of their enemies, these idols. So in chapter six, we see that they've once again turned away. They've started worshiping false gods. And so the Lord puts them into the hands of the Midianites, the Amalekites and the people of the East, this really big group of people together. And the Israelites are being so oppressed by these people. They're trying to, you know, sow grain and harvest it. But every time they do, these people just come out in their hordes. In uh, Judges 6, it actually tells us that they are without number. They are numerous and their camels are numerous. And they're oppressing the Israelites so much that they have to dig holes for themselves to hide in and hide in caves. And, and here we pick up and we hear that... The Israelites, you know, they can't even, they actually, they started to become really famished and impoverished. And in their, their poverty and their, their, their um, hunger, they cry out to God. And God hears the cry of his people once again. Such a beautiful thing. It's very unfortunate that sometimes you and I, we have to get to this point in our lives where enough is finally enough. And all the anxiety and worries and stresses build up to such a crescendo that we cry out to God. We can do that Far before that time, we can turn to the Lord. So they turn to the Lord, and what does the Lord do? He sends a prophet, a man of God, speaking on his behalf to the people, showing them their sin. This prophet reminds them that God has been with them through Egypt. He's been with them. He's spoken to his people, and he's protected them, taken care of them. 
They've seen God's hand performing miracles, and yet they have turned away from hearing the, and obeying the voice of God. We see this here in verse 10 of, of Judges chapter 6. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. So we see the problem the Israelites are having with God is they're not listening to God's voice. They're not obeying his voice. And then the beautiful thing about my God is that he isn't just... Uh, one who speaks when God speaks because he is present and he's a living and good God he doesn't just speak to his people but he also acts and here God acts in verse 11 we find the angel of the Lord which is a pre-incarnate picture of Jesus Christ himself the angel of the Lord he is visiting this young man named Gideon and he's found, um, he finds Gideon inside his father's wine press, hiding inside his wine press, busy thrashing out wheat um, to make bread. And he doesn't want to do it in the open for fear of persecution and oppression. So um, Gideon, what he's doing is he's trying to keep the peace. The same thing that you and I do a lot of times. We don't want to stir anything up. We don't want to cause problems. So what we do is we hide away and we do things in secrets. So maybe we'll practice our Christianity in secret. Or we'll, um, you know, we'll love someone or say a kind word in secret so no one sees. Because we don't want to ruffle any feathers. Uh, we don't want to speak out. So we just try and keep the peace. But the Lord wants to do more than that. So the Lord comes and he visits um, Gideon. And this is what he says to him. Um, Jesus says, and the, Lord, and the angel of the Lord said here in verse 12, he appeared to Gideon. He said to him, the Lord is with you. You mighty man of valor. Well, Gideon didn't really look like a mighty man of valor in that wine press hiding away from the Midianites. But the Lord saw through and he saw Gideon's purpose and why he called Gideon and the reason why he made him, even though Gideon didn't see that. So what happens is Gideon starts to give God all these excuses and he says to him, Oh, like I'm a mighty man of valor. Gideon says to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us here, the Lord says to him, I, I, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And then Gideon turns it around and he says, the Lord is with us. God, if you're saying that you're with us, spreading the responsibility around to his fellow man. When God clearly said to him, Gideon, I'm with you, specifically you, I'm calling you. So Gideon says, why haven't we seen the miracles of our fathers and all these things? And, and why isn't it the same? And why aren't we being delivered from the many lights? The Lord speaks to him a second time now. The Lord says this to him. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and you will save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Here God once again narrows it down and says, Gideon, I am calling you. I'm calling you. You need to take responsibility here. So, he says to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest of Manasseh. He's so having a bit of a pity party now. And the Lord says this to him a third time. He says, surely I will be with you and you will defeat the Midianites as one man. God encourages Gideon that he will be with him. He will be with him. Men and women, Gideon, now he says, okay, if this is really you, if you are God, then, you know, give me a sign. Let me offer a sacrifice to you. So the Lord says, okay, great. Let's, let's, let's do that. So Gideon goes and he prepares um, a, young, a young goat and unleavened bread and a, uh, from an ipa, ipa of flour. And he makes a broth and he puts it on a rock, puts all these things on a rock. The Lord says to him, put it on a rock. Then the angel of the Lord uh, takes uh, the rod that he's busy holding and he touches the, the bread and the meats. And flames come up from the rock and consume this beautiful sacrifice. And the angel of the Lord disappears from his sight. And at that moment, Gideon perceives that it's the angel of the Lord. So he says, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord says to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. 
So Gideon builds an altar there to the Lord and he calls it, the Lord is peace. To this day, it is still in offer of the Abyssalites. The Lord is peace. That word peace is very, very unique and special. It's not like the peace that we know. That word peace is shalom. God says this. He says, Shalom be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Encouraging Gideon. Church, that word shalom doesn't just mean peace, it means restoration, to make something whole. At its basic essence, that word is like if you had to see a puzzle and one of the pieces is missing. To shalom that puzzle would be to put that piece back to make the whole puzzle whole. This is the piece that God is, is looking for and looking to give to us. A piece of restoration and wholeness. This is what Jesus says to Gideon. He says that my peace is with you. My wholeness is with you. Don't be afraid. And there's something really beautiful and special here. If you follow with me. In verse 16 he says, And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you. And you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then we see the second time he says, Verse 23, the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Shalom be with you. And then Gideon, Gideon builds an altar saying, God is my peace. God is my shalom. Men and women, this is not just here in Judges. We find this throughout the Bible. God's peace is very different to our peace. Our peace is this kind of like a peacekeeping peace and trying to escape from the world. God's peace is very active. It's turning us from peacekeepers into peacemakers. That's what God calls us to be. And we see that here, Matthew 5 verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. And look at this beautiful verse, Romans 8 14, it says, Whoever is led by the Spirit of God will be called the Son of God. We see this theme throughout the Bible. Here, the Holy Spirit and the peace of God connected. John 14, this wonderful passage where um, highly charged, where Jesus is, has just been betrayed by Judas Iscariot. And he's just told Peter, Peter, tomorrow you go in the morning, you're going to deny me three times. And he's telling his, he's busy comforting his disciples, saying to them, I'm going away. And where I'm going, you cannot come. And just before, um, verse 27, he says to them, he says to them this, he says, The Holy Spirit, whom my Father shall send you, he will teach you all things, and he'll bring in remembrance the things that I've taught you. And then he says this, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you. And he says, um, don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. So this is a very common greeting in, in Jewish times. Peace be upon you. Shalom. Peace to you. We might know that as peace, peace out. And the Lord says this. He says, he, he almost makes this beautiful twist. He says, my peace I give to you. That same kind of shalom, goodbye, as a, as a greeting of goodbye. But he says, not as the world do I give you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. That shalom peace, that wholeness that God wants to give us, it's combined with the Holy Spirit of God. We see that once again. And I want to tell you now, if you're looking for peace, peace is not something that you can muster up or attain by yourself. You know, I used to smoke and drink and I used to do yoga and do drugs and sleep with women all these things, trying to find peace, trying to get rid of the anxiety in my life. You know, when I was doing yoga and meditating, I'd find peace just for that moment while I was busy meditating. But afterwards, it would be like um, if someone said something mean to me or like there was a car that hooted, I would find my peace just disappears. But the Lord says he gives a peace not like the world gives. He gives a lasting peace. And I want to challenge you and encourage you today. That if you are looking for peace in this world from your anxieties, 
there's this beautiful verse, Philippians 4, verse 6 to 8. I'm sure you know it well. It says this, be anxious of nothing, but in, in everything, by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and He will give you, and the, the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I want to say this to you. If you're experiencing anxiety and trouble and you don't know what to do about all these things, do you know Jesus? Do you know the Holy Spirit? Because the person that knows the Holy Spirit will have peace, a living peace, because they will know that God is with them. Do you know what happened just after that happened with Gideon? God called him at that moment afterwards when he revealed his, his, his peace to him. God calls Gideon and this is what he does. God says to Gideon, he sends him on a mission. He says, now, now that you have my peace, now that you know that I'm with you, I want you to be a peacemaker. I want you to go and destroy the idol, the statue that is inside your village that has been built against me. And we know later on in that chapter, Gideon is the leader of a mighty army. God is not calling us to a peace away from conflict. He's calling us to peace in conflict, to be peacemakers within conflict wherever we are. Because we have the peace, the living peace of God with us. Men and women, if you don't know God right now and you're not saved, I can say that you are an anxious person. You have anxiety. We all have anxiety. But nothing in this world can get rid of that anxiety except for Jesus Christ. And it's extremely easy to be saved. God has made it so that even a child can do it. I know many people that were saved at the age of six years old, five years old, that they gave their hearts to the Lord. It, all you do is this. You say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I've been trying to do things in my own way, trying to be, find peace in my own way, trying to live in my own way. Lord, I confess that to you. I want to give you these things. I want to turn to you, Jesus. Jesus, I trust that you died on the cross for my sins. So that the wrath of God against my sin, that justice that God had against my sin, would be turned away because of Jesus. That Jesus would take the wrath of God upon himself. So that we could have peace with God. That Jesus would bring the peace of God to you and I. That we could be made at peace and reconciled with God and then go out and be peacemakers and wherever we go, proclaim reconciliation. Go and tell people about Jesus Christ and go and tell them about God. That they would also be saved and experience that living peace. And I want to say to you today, you can experience that peace of God. And if you are saved and you, you are experiencing so much anxiety, God, it's a very simple thing that you need to do. Is turn to God and look to Him. Experience peace in Jesus. By praying, giving him your anxieties, giving him your stresses, your worries and your fears. Giving him those things in prayer. And getting to know the voice of God. You see what happened was that the Israelites, they heard the voice of God, but they didn't obey the voice of God. And God speaks by his Holy Spirit into your life. He's been doing this. When people say, oh, I don't hear God. I don't know the voice of God. The reason why is because we don't obey the voice of God. He's always speaking to us in our, in our ear. And yet we turn away from him, him and we rebel against him. But the Lord carries on speaking and he loves us. We can turn into him. And I would say, like, like to say this to you right now. That if you know that if you've been resisting the Holy Spirit and you haven't been letting the Holy Spirit control your life. And, and shift and direct your heart and every single situation that you find yourself in. Then you will be experiencing anxiety and unrest. But if you turn and you listen to the voice of God and you obey the voice of God as the Holy Spirit with you, abiding with you, Jesus said two things that he would give the church. The only two things that we have, we have the Holy Spirit, our helper, our comforter, who is with us. The very same spirit that was with God, with Jesus. And we have the peace of Jesus Christ, a peace that comes from knowing God, our father. Knowing God that he's the creator of all things and that he has our lives in his hands. If you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me now. Turn to him. Let go of your sin. 
Obey the voice of God once again and turn from those things, that those idols that you've been using to try and find and make peace your own way. Because they, all they do is they cover up. They cover up for a while. And then when those things, when, you know, when the weed runs out, when the alcohol runs out, when the pornography runs dry, then we find our problems are back once again, stronger than ever. They don't solve your problems. Pray this prayer with me now. The Bible says if we want to have peace and experience peace, we can do it through prayer. Father, we want to pray and commit ourselves to you right now and repent from just resisting your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, if there's anyone here that is listening to this and they don't know you, Jesus, I pray that you would speak into their hearts right now, God, and convict them of their sin, Lord. Let them turn to you and give you their, their worries, their stresses, their sins, Lord God, their pride, Father, their rebellion, and, and just turn their hearts to you, Lord. Jesus, show them that you are the one that died on the cross for their sins, Lord, and that you want to come and save them exactly the way that they are right now, Lord. I pray that they would experience you and know you as their Lord and Savior, and that they would turn to you and ask you to come and save them. You said whoever calls on the name of the Lord would be saved, and I know that this is true, Jesus, and I ask this, and I thank you in Jesus' name, Lord. Would you forgive sins and turn us to you once again, Lord? I just pray this in Jesus' name, Lord God. Amen. Church, uh, Caroline is going to talk to us about the one fund now and she's going to close for us as well but i want to ask you if you like this video and you would like to see more of the names of god and you want to experience the names of god for yourself or if you want to um, also you know write to us and tell us about um, you know you asking for the lord to save you click on the subscribe button below click on the like button like this video click on the notifications bell you would get all the new notifications we've got some beautiful series that we do on a weekly basis. Stay tuned and yeah, connect with us because we want to pray with you. We want to get to know you and we want you to get to know God. All right, I enjoyed this time with you so much and I just thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to see you next time. God bless you and shalom. The peace of the Lord be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. What an epic day this has been. Thank you so much for joining us, church. Jethro, thank you for sharing that beautiful message. You know what? One of the things that's really a benefit of being part of a church family is that we get to care for each other in very practical ways. This is why we have set up the One Fund. This is a way that we can reach out to the families in our church in very practical ways by providing some essentials for them. If you have it on your heart to give towards the One Fund, you can go to New Life to You dot com forward slash one fund and there you can make your donations thank you so much everyone for joining us tonight i hope you have a blessed evening further